Hello folks, this is Sula once again. You're listening to another video on Civ 4 where we're going to be looking at another opening in Civ 4. This comes from a bit of a challenge that was posted at Realms Beyond in the forums, posted by Seven Spirits. Perhaps challenge isn't the best word, but basically a little bit of a micro exercise. The idea was to take this starting save and then try to play out the first 30 turns of the game and to try and then uh, see where you know see where you were after 30 turns and compare everybody's approaches to the start and then just try to get some feedback and advice and see what people did with the different start that sort of thing so that's what we're going to be doing here this is sort of a pure theoretical or sandboxing exercise seven spirits gave everybody a picture of the map that was revealed and told everybody just uh you know use the full use the knowledge of the map to best effect just ignore what the AI is doing. Don't worry about barbarians or anything like that. Basically, like, don't worry about military. Just try to get the best opening that you can was sort of the idea behind that. And that seemed like it would be fun to do. It's the kind of thing I already do with these YouTube videos where I look at different openings. So I said, you know what, let's, let's do this. This will be fun. So this is my attempt to do that. And you're going to see me playing out this particular attempt as we go through on this particular playthrough. So let me go ahead and I'll just put my name in here so you can tell that this is me playing and as opposed to someone else. Uh, so a couple things by way of getting started. We wanna talk about what our leader and our Civ are. Leader in this particular game is Catherine. Catherine is creative and imperialistic. Creative is free culture, two culture per turn in every city. So that's kind of nice. We'll see how that comes into effect in this game. Double speed production of library, pavilion, coliseum. That's pointless. We won't get to any of those buildings in the first 30 turns. Imperialistic, plus 100% great general emergence. That won't matter because we're not gonna fight anyone. And 50% faster production of settler, which will in fact matter because we're gonna be, well, doing some different things to try and speed up the production of a settler and we will make use of that bonus. As far as our Civ is concerned, we're playing as China. You can see the dragon banner down here. China is infamous in Civ 4 circles for being the only Civ in the game that starts with agriculture and mining techs. These are widely viewed as being the two best starting techs in the game. Agriculture because it lets you hook up farming resources and mining because it leads to bronze working. Basically what China can do and no one else can do is immediately start researching bronze, immediately start by researching bronze working and still have agriculture tech in hand to be able to build a farm. They're the only ones that can do that. So that's why China's pretty unique in this game. Anyway, I already know what the map looks like. So I'm gonna move over here in this direction. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and pop on debug mode right here. Turn it, put the game into debug mode. And then here's the revealed map using debug mode. So where most people chose to settle in this particular start was on the tile where the settler's standing right now, and it makes perfect sense to do so. It's a very strong tile. This is a, a Plains Hill tile, which means it is a two production plant. You will get two production on the center tile if you plant here. There is also a wet corn or an irrigated corn in the first string, and there's forest to chop, and it's a good production city. You have two floodplains down here. It's a great spot for a city. Now, that said, I still think you can do a little bit better, or at least I liked another spot better, and that was to settle on this tile instead, on the banana tile. So let's go ahead and do that, and then I'll explain why that is the case. Queue up a worker and move the warrior. Uh, this warrior really has nothing to do, I'm just gonna move him into the capital. Okay, so why this tile? Well, when you settle on a plains hill, you get a two production plant, so the tile, the center tile of a city will be two food, two production, one commerce. Standard standard city center is two food, one production, one commerce. So it's standard two, one, one. On a plains hill, you get two, two, one. So it's innately better. You're getting a bonus production point every single turn. Now, alternately, you can settle on a bananas or a corn, get the same result for being on a corn, uh, and you get an extra point of food. So instead of being two, one, one, you get three food, one production, one commerce, three, one, one. And that's kind of rare. You don't typically get the chance to do that. But a banana tile is actually a pretty darn good tile to found on. You can't do very much with a banana in the early game. The resource, the tech that it's tied to is calendar tech to build a plantation. Uh, you can actually see that down there in the bottom left corner, research calendar. Uh, but that doesn't come until much, much later in the game. So founding on a banana doesn't really waste much of anything. And it's great to get that th three food plant. So basically, Getting the same benefit as being on a Plains Hill. Plus, we didn't have to waste more turns moving here. It's still turn one. It would have been turn one if we'd settled on the Plains Hill as well. Uh, and there are some other advantages to settling on this tile. A couple things that come to mind. Number one, we pick up another floodplain tile. So we actually have three floodplains instead of two, and that's going to factor into this start. Make use of the three floodplain tiles. Uh, so we get an extra floodplains. Number two, we can chop this forest. 
So we preserve that tile for chopping, which is a minor benefit, but not terrible. And then most importantly is we get this ivory tile in the city's radius. Uh, and that might not seem like a big deal, but this tile actually will help us out a lot. This plains forest ivory is actually going to help us a lot. And you'll see why in a second. Uh, we're going to research bronze working because we want to be able to chop forest. That's not a surprise. China, you typically pick China if you want to go immediately into bronze working as your second tech. So anyway, let's go ahead and watch how this plays out. We're building a worker first. Well, because you pretty much always want to start worker first. And it doesn't matter what tile we work. It's the same right now. We might as well work the corn tile. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so because we're creative, and because this is quick speed, I don't know if I mentioned that before, but this is quick speed, uh, culture will pop, borders pop at five culture instead of 10 on quick speed. So we're going to get a, a border pop next turn. That actually is going to factor in because then we'll have this ivory tile in our borders. Now, why the ivory tile? Well, I'll go ahead and turn off the resource indicator again. If you look at this tile, the ivory is one food, three production. So this is a four yield tile, one food, three production. Every other tile is only three yield or lower. So if we swap to the ivory, we actually get the worker out a turn sooner goes from six turns down to five turns. And that makes a pretty big difference. We're basically gaining an entire turn for free here over starting on the Plains Hill tile. So that's actually a pretty big difference to do this, especially on quick speed where every turn is magnified. So that's the biggest reason to move onto that banana tile is to get this ivory tile into play. This is effectively like having a mined grassland hill tile because it's one, it's one three, one, uh, one food, three production. So it's basically like if we had a mine on this grassland tile from the very beginning. So that makes our worker come out a turn sooner, and that's a big advantage. It's the main reason why I believe it's worthwhile to move here. So in any case, now we have nothing to do. Now we're just wasting, we're just hitting next turn until the worker finishes. So next turn, next turn, next turn. The AI will found religions as it always does out in the fog, but we don't, we don't care about the AI doing that. We're just totally ignoring them in this game. And now our worker finishes. We're going to start a warrior. And what to do with the worker is a no-brainer. We want to improve this, this uh, irrigated corn that will become a six-food tile. So we're going to go ahead and move over here and farm it. That's what every single person who opened up with this start did, and that was the correct call. It's pretty obviously the correct call. Uh, it takes four turns to build a farm on quick speed. It takes five turns to build a farm on normal speed, so it's a little bit faster. Now, in terms of what we're doing, well, we want the capital to grow. We want to hit size two. That's the basic idea is we want to grow to size two ASAP. So we'll just work that corn tile. It's the same as the floodplains right now, but we'll just work the corn anyway. And we'll dump production to a warrior. We do not care about this warrior. Yes, we could build it quickly, but that's pretty pointless. The warrior isn't going to do anything for us. So we're going to max growth. We're going to get to size two as quickly as possible. So we're going to work that corn tile and then we're just going to hit next turn and wait for bronze working to finish that's about all that's going on workers farming bronze working is about to finish we're actually only two beakers short so the farm will finish and bronze working will finish on this turn leonard nimoy will go ahead and talk in the background blah 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 so bronze working is like the uber tech of the early game can chop forest reveals copper enables slavery we're going to use it immediately for the forest chopping purpose we will revolt to slavery but not on this particular turn and now we've got some choices on what to research next so let me let me explain why to go what why I'm what I'm going to pick next. Okay. We can research mysticism. However, we are creative. We get free border pops. So mysticism is not that interesting. We don't really need monuments. Fishing is pointless for this start. We're not on the coast. We have no seafood resources. Wheel is quite good. We're actually going to pick wheel in a second. I'll come back to that. Mining. Mining would let us put a camp on this ivory. But we see the thing about that is putting a camp on this ivory is actually not that valuable. The tile is one food, three production right now. If we improve it with a camp, we only go up to four production, one four. And that's it only adds one production on the tile. It's pretty minor. So improving this, this tile is, is not all that important. We can safely skip this. Masonry is pointless this early in the game. Iron working is pointless this early in the game. Animal husbandry would be useful if we were going to settle a city that uh, used an animal husbandry resource like the sheep or the pigs, but I'm not going to do that, not immediately anyway. So we can safely skip animal husbandry and come back to it later. We're going to go for wheel pottery. And basically, we're going to go wheel pottery to put, be able to put down cottages and make use of these floodplains. For those who are familiar with the Realms Beyond, uh, the way that Realms Beyond played in the Intersight game, this opening is going to look a little similar to that. Founding on a banana tile, putting cottages on floodplains early in the game. Uh, it's going to look kind of similar to that. 
because I thought that was a good start. And this is going to mimic that in some regards. Now, some things that are different, obviously, we are not in this game, we're playing as Catherine, creative, imperialistic. We are not financial expansive, which are the traits that really maximize an early pottery start. So is this the best way to start? That I don't know. I'm not sure. But I do think that getting these tiles into play early on uh, is in fact a, a strong option. I don't know if it's ideal, but it's at least a strong option. Uh, and in, in the midst of all that, we did finish the farm on the corn tile. This now becomes a six food tile, an awesome, awesome tile. And well, we'll move on from there. Okay, so yes, we've connected our first food resource, the corn, the capital grows to size two. And the worker now is gonna dash over here and chop down this forest. As you might imagine, that's why we rushed bronze working is to be able to chop going to chop down this forest, and you'll see why this particular one for logistical reasons in a minute. Uh, not interested in building this warrior. Instead, I'm going to swap over and build another worker. And once again, this is where this ivory tile comes into play and is so huge for this start. Watch. It, by focusing on the ivory tile, this is a four yield tile. This is a six yield tile. So together, we have six plus four. We get ten total food hammers. Six food, four production. 10, well, Ted Food Hammers, as T Hawk has kind of coined this term and is kind of stuck. But what that means is we can build a worker in four turns with no overflow or nothing lost. And again, overflow is not bad in Civ 4. We just go into the next build. But to be able to build a worker in four turns is really good for this early in the game. We're on turn 12. We'll have a worker done end of turn 16. That's actually really good for this early in the game, even on quick speed. So uh, we're going to get a second worker out, use him to improve tiles, use him to chop. So anyway, next turn. Now this worker will start chopping. Here on quick speed, 13 production for a chop. We'll take three turns and then removes the forest. So that's why we are playing. A, that's how to maximize China, basically. So that's what we're going to do. So chop. Next turn, borders expand because we're on quick speed and we're a, a creative sieve. So next turn. There you go, next turn. Now the chop finishes, and the chop actually doesn't do anything to speed up this worker. If you note, the chop does nothing to speed up the worker. It would have finished anyway. We've got basically like this 13 bonus production coming in. Uh, we're gonna make use of that, but uh, we'll have to make use of that on the overflow. So anyway, next turn, wheel finishes, can now build roads. We're gonna go into pottery. Next turn, and now we've got another worker. So what are we gonna do with this overflow in here? Well. We could dump a ton of overflow into a warrior, but that's kind of silly. We don't really want to do that. So instead, we're going to put the overflow into a settler. And now here is where the imperialistic bonus comes into play. Remember, as imperialistic, we get plus 50% on all production that goes into a settler. Not food, only production, but anything that anything that has a little hammer symbol is what will get uh, that 50% bonus. So the 13 overflow, our four base production, that's 17. Multiply that by 1.5, and we get 25 then plus six from the food surplus. So we're going to get dumped 31 total food hammers into the settler this turn. So that'll actually knock out about half of it. And this is how we're going to make use of that, that we're going to basically take that chop and turn it into uh, turn it into a settler. So anyway, this guy now needs something to do. Well, he's going to move over to this tile and he's going to chop that. And our second worker going to move to this other hill tile and going to chop that. So it actually works out quite nicely. What this, going to, what this is going to allow us to do is one of my favorite things uh, that you can do when you have early, uh, early bronze working for early chopping. We're going to actually grow the capital at the same time that we're building the settler, which you normally can't do because obviously you're not growing when you build a settler, but watch. Basically, we're going to build the settler just with forest chops and then grow to size three when we're not building the settler. Uh, little side note, every single time that I have played this start, I have met Ramsey's AI on the same tile on the same turn every single time. So we're just going to ignore Ramsey's. We, we don't care about him. <laughs> so whatever. But he always pops up on this tile on the exact same turn every time. The AI, I guess, does the same thing every time. All right. So anyway, chop down a forest, 13 production, removes the forest, 13 production, removes the forest. And uh, like I said, well, while that's going on, we're going to let the capital grow. So we'll swap off the swap off the settler, swap back to this warrior, and we'll go over to max growth configuration the floodplains, and the corn. And we're actually getting eight food per turn at this point because we've got six from the floodplains, uh, three from this floodplains, and then we've got three on the center tile. So we end up actually getting plus eight food out of all that. So that's that's quite nice. It's a lot of growth early on. But anyway, we'll let the capital grow. So we'll grow to size three in two turns while these guys are chopping. As I said, we're growing the, growing the capital while we're chopping out a settler. So uh, another turn, these guys haven't finished their chopping yet. Hit next turn. 
and that scout keeps running around. Anyway, there we go. Now the workers are done, done with their chopping. So there's one forest finished. Clearing a forest has created 13 production for Beijing. There's the second one. Now we would get a ridiculous amount of production to a warrior, but we don't, we don't want that. So back to the settler, and we now finish the settler. So we only spent two turns actually building the settler. Finished it with, uh, finished it with three forest chops over two total turns built, working the settler. Uh, this, that was two turns building the settler and then two turns growing. And of course, we're going to run the ivory top while we're not growing because it has the highest yield. There you go. 26 from chopping, four base production, plus 50%. That gets us to 45 production into the settler. So it's very, very, very nice. Very, very nice. And the capital has grown to size three while this is going on. So we can work three tiles. The corn, the ivory and the floodplains. Very, very nice. Okay, so now the uh, now the settler will pop out and we still have more overflow. So we're actually gonna dump that into a worker here. 12 overflow from previous build and that four base production. Okay, now the question arises, which is, well, where do we move this settler? Like, where are we putting the second city? The most common place that I saw people putting a second city was on this tile up here. This one, let's see, uh, there isn't any hotkey that does. Okay, on this tile, I'm gonna go ahead and ping it which is a great spot for a city, don't get me wrong. Uh, and in fact, this is where I'm going to put my third city down the road because this is an amazing city spot. But for the second city, I actually like another spot better. I like this spot right here on this particular hill tile where there's a coal resource, but that doesn't factor in because you don't see coal until you get much, much later in the game. So why this tile? What's the appeal of this one? Well, a couple different things, a couple things that factor in. Number one, you can share this corn tile. You can trade the corn tile between the capital and the second city, uh, which is a very big deal. You can use it to grow the second city super duper fast if you want. Uh, with that corn and with this other corn over here, it actually would hit plus nine food per turn. So you could grow this incredibly fast or work specialists, whatever you want to do. So that's a, a big plus. Number two, shares the floodplains tiles. All three of these floodplains can get shared between the two cities. So you can build cottages on them, share them back and forth, grow these for the capital to use later on. That's also a big advantage. Uh, also shares this tile as well. Eventually, I don't think in the first 30 turns, but eventually we'll build a cottage here. Then we'll be able to share that grassland cottage as well. Uh, then it can also work these two grassland river cottages as well. You can build cottages on these two, put commerce on them. Very, very nice. Uh, even down the road, it has, it has non-grassland river cottages too. These three tiles are more tiles that can be cottaged. Later on, you could even cottage these four river plains tiles. Like all these river plains tiles could be cottaged as well. It'd be a great commerce city. And then of course, we're creative. We get free border expansions. This corn will come in range when the borders expand in like three turns. And yes, it's a dry corn, but that's still a five food tile. And that's still a pretty darn good tile. Uh, now, the other thing it does is, what it does is because the food resource at the second city is an agriculture resource, because it's a corn, we don't have to go for early animal husbandry. That allows us to go for wheel and then pottery on research because we don't, you know, we're not tied to an animal husbandry resource like this pig or this sheep tile. So anyway, for all those reasons, I do think that this is a very strong place to put the second city. Now, we can also speed our way along to that city too. Watch, have the worker move down here, toss down a road, this guy move to the same tile, toss down a road, and now the settler can move to that tile immediately with no turns wasted. This is also an ideal turn to revolt to slavery, so pop into slavery civic, use the turn of anarchy right here. This is sort of the classic turn that people revolt into anarchy is the turn that you're moving a settler to its second spot, like right after the first settler comes out. That's a great, usually the most common time to revolt into slavery. So anyway, we burn our turn of anarchy. And now the one downside of going into anarchy is look, we're a turn away from finishing pottery, so we can't build a cottage with these workers, but that's okay. We'll use this turn to dump down a road. Uh, we use this turn to put a road on this tile anyway. Uh, it's not great, but it's, you know, it, it will be useful for micro purposes to have that road. Anyway, put this here, put Shanghai, and let's see, if you examine the city, because we built that road, we ought to already have the trade route connection. Uh, my understanding is if we didn't build that road, we'd still get the trade route connection, but we'd have to wait until next turn because these are both on a river. But because we built the road, the trade route is already there and we get two extra commerce this turn basically. So that's kind of nice. Anyway, we'll build a warrior here. Oh, and one other thing. Uh, normally what you do is you go down to 0% research and you just, you know, run 0% and then the next turn, um, the next turn you'd run 100%. But because we actually really do want to finish pottery next turn, so these two workers can start building cottages, I am going to run, uh, 
what is this? What, what can we finish? Yeah, run right here. 80% science to finish the finish the uh, finished pottery research next turn because that actually is important. Then over here in the capital, we're still dumping that overflow from the settler build into a third worker and working these tiles. So anyway, if you look at the tiles we're working, we're working a floodplains here, and we're working corn floodplains and ivory. And of course, we can share all of these floodplains and the corn tile as desired. So anyway, next turn. Right here, we finished pottery. Now we can build cottages, can build granaries. And at this point, I'm now going to go ahead and research hunting and uh, hunting into animal husbandry. Uh, why hunting first? Well, basically because it makes animal husbandry tech cheaper. For those who don't know, anytime there are two arrows pointing to a tech in Civ 4, you only need to research one tech to be able to go on to the next one. Like right now, I can research masonry, even though I don't have mysticism because there's two arrows here. But if I have mysticism, and, if I had mysticism and mining, then masonry is a little bit cheaper. It's actually 20% cheaper. So it makes more sense to go hunting and then animal husbandry. It just makes the text cheaper and I get more out of it. Okay, so in any case, we'll drop research down to 0%, pick up extra to avoid rounding errors. We'll go back up to 100% after that. And these guys are gonna start laying down a cottage or two. So they'll come down here, put the cottage on this tile. It takes four turns to build a cottage on a floodplain tile on quick speed. It takes five turns on normal speed, four on quick. Uh, but together with two of them paired, they'll do it in two turns. So go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, and I'll also go ahead and swap this over to a granary because let's face it, the granary is more useful. Doesn't matter that much, but it is a little bit more useful. Okay, next turn. Next turn, now the cottage finishes. I'll have Beijing swap over to this cottage. It doesn't really matter, either city could work this, but we've already got a floodplains cottage done. So a little bit more commerce coming in. It only, of course, it's only one to start. Uh, this is where being financial would be really sweet. We get three commerce on this tile, but we are not financial. So don't get quite as much from commerce. In any case though, we do have that down and go ahead and we'll hit next turn and we'll get another work, we'll finish our third wor uh, worker over there. Now these guys move over here and they will go ahead and put a cottage on this floodplain style. They are not, in other words, they're avoiding wasting worker turns by doing that. So we'll get another one improved. Over here in the capital, we've got some overflow coming in. We've got five overflow from the previous build. So I'm gonna dump that overflow into the granary, which is more important than a warrior. And then down here, I'm going to configure the capital for max growth, uh, which is, by the way, nine food per turn, which is pretty ridiculous. So nine food per turn. We're going to grow this capital to size four, and then we'll double whip out a settler using slavery. Basic idea here. And we'll use them for this third city site. Now, the third city site, I do want to grab the city right here. This city will be will come in right around the same time we finish animal husbandry research. I do like that spot for a third city. Uh, there are other spots we could put a city. This spot is also quite good. Couldn't criticize this spot either. Uh, it's where I was thinking for maybe like a fourth city, but been doing this with the understanding of that spot in mind. Uh, so in order to get a settler to that city, if we just move them here normally, the settler will move one, two, and then, so it'll take one turn to move there, then another turn to move there, and then a third turn to move onto the hill. But we can speed that along if the worker builds one turn of road up in that direction. So I'm actually gonna build the road first. Uh, for micro reasons, it works better to build this road first. Uh, as opposed to like trying to build a cottage and then building that road second. Anyway, you'll see. So anyway, that worker is going to toss down the road, hunting into animal husbandry. That road finishes and this cottage finishes as well. So we now have a second floodplains cottage. Uh, now what we could have done is we could have moved over to this corn tile and started get the corn tile and play faster. But we already had half of this floodplains cottage finished and it feels like it's better to me to finish that floodplains cottage since it was already halfway done as opposed to getting the uh, corn in play one turn faster. I could be wrong on that. Uh, you actually can, let's see, one, two, three. Actually, it might've been better to do that the other way around. I'll have to go, maybe I'll have to go back and test this because if I had moved, I could have rode it on this turn, this tile, this turn, farmed the corn, rode this, and then gone one, two, three, and finished the cut. It might've been better not to finish that. I'm not sure, we'll see. Uh, you actually can, avoid wasting turns a little bit better. I don't know, we'll see. I, I, I don't know if I'm willing to do that much micro, but you could have made a case for going over to the corn first. Uh, but the way, I had, the way I have it written down, I did it this way first. Anyway, so Beijing's gonna grow to size four next turn. Shanghai's gonna grow to size two next turn. So we'll go ahead and hit next turn. We're starting to get close to turn 30. At this point, there's a couple different things this worker can do. He could move up here and be in preparation to improve the third city. Uh, he can move down here and put up uh, work on putting a uh, cottage on that floodplains. He can move down here and 
put a camp on this ivory. Which one of these is the best? I'm still not 100% sure. I did, was kind of limited. Didn't want to do like an obnoxious amount of testing on this. Uh, but in any case, what I think I'll do is just have them come down here and improve the ivory. I don't know if that's optimal or not. Uh, after improving the, the ivory, he can move here and then start a cottage, and then he's not wasting worker turns. As for these guys, it's pretty obvious what they want to do. Move over here, road, move over here, and road, and then they'll be able to farm the corn next turn. Uh, as far as what tiles we're working, let's see, what can we do here? We have, let's see, we have one, two, three. Yeah, we've got these tiles in play. And then here we've got these two tiles in play. Uh, working the bare corn tile is not ideal, but there's only so much you can do. On quick speed, you often outgrow your tile improvements. That's very common on quick speed. You, you, you're growing faster than you can keep up. And sadly, that's the case here. But overall, it's still not exactly bad. Anyway, next turn. Now Beijing's one turn away from growth. We're going to swap to a settler right now. And we will double whip that settler next turn. And then we'll overflow into the granary. In the meantime, even though this is just a sandbox, I'll start moving this warrior up towards the city. We'll pretend that, you know, we're, we want to actually defend that. All right, this, this worker will put a camp on the ivory. These two will move to the corn tile and go ahead and farm that one. And again, it takes four, turn, four total turns to farm the corn. So they'll go ahead and work on that. And uh, yeah, everything was looking looking the way I expected it to. So, all right, you keep moving up. Down here, we finished the finished that farm. So now we've got a five food tile there. And Beijing will go ahead, two pop whip the settler, and we get the imperialistic bonus, which is why we're able to get that. Uh, why we're able to do the whip. So we'll get quite a bit of overflow into the probably into the granary, I suppose. Shanghai is growing to. Let's see, growing to size four. Shanghai's, uh, the basic idea for Shanghai is grow to size four, double whip a worker, and then overflow back into that granary is the basic idea here. Obviously, we're not building military units, but that's just because this is, you know, practice exercise. All right, so next turn, animal husbandry finishes. And from here, it doesn't, here the path kind of opens up, but writing seems to be the most useful tech that we could research from there. Okay, so move this guy up here. One, two, three, onto that tile. And the warrior, note that the warrior will get there at the same time to protect that settler. Alrighty. These guys, I'll go ahead. Uh, there's a couple different, there's two, basically there's two different things I could do with these guys. I could have them finish the road here, or they could move onto this tile and then put a partial cottage onto that tile. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish the road because it looks better. <laughs> uh, it might, in the real world scenario, it would probably be better to put half of a cottage down on that tile. Anyway, in Beijing, you can see Beijing now will regrow back to size three, and we get all that overflow. There it is, the 12 overflow goes into uh, goes into the granary. And then next turn, we'll pick up that tile. Shanghai is also working a floodplains cottage, so all our improved tiles are in play. Let's see, we go ahead, next turn. We've now gained access to ivory, so we have an additional happy face in each city, which is nice. There we go. And let's see right now, can we grow? No, it's probably better to work. Almost certainly better to work this tile. You know, one four one four one is probably better than just three zero. So anyway, work that tile here. Go ahead and start cottage there. These guys can move here. Start a cottage here. And let's see, you move here. Oh, and we met one of the other AIs. Great, thanks. And move there, and then you move onto this tile. And let's see what else do we have. Shanghai, of course, should be working. Not that. Yeah, Shanghai wants to be working this tile right here. So it'll grow in two turns. And that's where we are on turn 30, uh, as far as the way this goes. So that's what it looks like 30 turns into the game. Uh, we've got half a granary finished in Beijing. We have the third city is slightly delayed compared to some of the ones that I've seen, but we have a lot of tile improvements in play. We have six pop here. Uh, let's see, what is it? We've got how many improved tiles overall? One, two, three, four, five. That's and a couple more about to be finished. And uh, we do need to get worker. We do need to get workers up there, but they're on their way. Let me just play out the next two or three turns to show you how I do this. That's where we stood on turn thirty. So anyway, found our next city. Gangzhou goes down. We can start a granary here, working the oasis tile, which is a great tile, obviously. Uh, it is also, of course, connected to the other cities by trade route, which is nice. Turn science back on again. Right here. Let's see. Uh, we finished a cottage on that tile. 
So I'll go ahead and work that cottage. And cottage here. And actually all these cottages will finish, or that, that cottage will then be finished next turn as well. So we'll, let's see, on turn 32, Beijing will be size four, Shanghai will be size four. I'll just play one more turn. And look, even writing tech will be about to finish in one more turn. So anyway, that cottage is done. And this one's about to finish. Ignore the jungle growing. So anyway, uh, let's see, what can we do here? Right there like that. And swap that to that. Actually, no, hold on. We do want to, you would want to finish that granary, so. Um, yeah, so that's what it looks like. And then at this point, Uh, as I said at this point, I'd probably let the granary finish, then have Beijing swap to a worker and double whip that. It also needs to get a warrior out at some point, but that's not a big deal. Uh, and Shanghai would also, let's see, swap to a worker, probably swap to a worker and double whip that as well. Uh, and then with five workers, we'd be in good position to go up here and improve Gangzhou. And where would I put my cities next? Well, I, I said I like that tile because it grabs copper. It's got sheep in the second ring. It can also share a couple tiles with the capital, which is quite nice. Like it can share these river tiles with the capital. I like a city on that tile as well. That's a good spot for city. It's got a dry corn and a floodplains in range. Also quite nice. And from here, you know, we just develop and keep expanding, growing upwards and outwards. But uh, that's, you know, that's what I'd do if I was doing this. And obviously I played on two little turns extra, but just to show how, uh, you know, we have these cottages in place and all that jazz. So anyway, hope that this was interesting once again. You can see we're not even in first place on the scoreboard, but uh, that wouldn't last for much longer. Note that only one AI has a second city, so we're poised to just explode past the AIs in growth because of how slow their particular starts are. Uh, also in terms of commerce, this start, so the great st strength of this start is it's very commerce focused, more, more commerce focused than some of the other starts. The GMP you can see is quite high. Uh, I don't know if that's better or worse, but that's more the way that I play. Uh, and you can see this is part of the reason why I love, I tend to focus on financial trait more than some other people. Uh, you can kind of see why getting these, you know, this would be just that much better if we were financial. But in any case, that's what this looks like. Hope people enjoyed this video. So hope this was fun to watch. And uh, be interested to see what other people come up with in Seven Spirits' uh, Seven Spirits's micro sort of setup here. So thanks for the fun setup and the fun challenge. Anyway, until next time, have a great weekend. See you guys again later. Take care.